Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. If you happen to be new around here, my name is Trevor and this is Anna. We are the Delightful Travelers. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the like button to follow along on our adventures here in Japan. If you have been watching, you would know that we are already in Osaka. It's where we're starting off our Japan series. Last week we were kind of exploring around and yep. today, as promised, we're going to be eating some food. We are starting things off at the Kuromon Ichiba Market. It is known as Osaka's Kitchen, so I think it's probably a great place to try some Japanese food here today. It is very, very famous for its seafood and if you guys watch us regularly, you know me, I in particular am not a big seafood person, I can't really eat it. Trevor might try to have a little bit today, we'll probably be trying hopefully some sushi so that we'll, we'll get some fish in there but I do have a big list of things we want to try. So this market is really big there's tons of people here but what's nice is it's kind of spread out right now like if you look this way there's not a lot of people so that's pretty cool. Yeah it's a Saturday I don't know if that makes it busier or less busy in here but you guys can maybe let us know in the comments. Right now it doesn't seem too bad so hopefully it stays that way. Yeah not bad at all. Now we did mention we don't eat a lot of seafood but currently like right now we're looking for something in the shape of a fish. We found it so this might be in the shape of a fish but pretty sure it's not going to taste like a fish. This is called taiyaki and it's basically a fish shaped cake and then it's filled with red bean paste. First off this smells really really good. It smells like a North American pancake like that kind of smell to it. Mm, it's really nice. So I'm gonna be honest here, I'm not quite sure how I feel about this. The cake itself is really, really nice and sweet and it does kind of have that like the traditional pancake flavor that those of us from North America or that side of the world will be very familiar with. The inside though is where it gets a little bit strange. So it is red bean paste. It kind of tastes like what you would expect it to. I thought maybe it would add some sweetener or something in there, but it's almost like if you imagine putting like black beans or something inside of a pancake, it's just, Kind of strange. Well, now she's got me uh, wildly curious about this little fish. This little tiny fish. So, given all like the sweet drinks we've seen in Japan so far, I definitely thought uh, this would be sweeter. Like Anna said, it's not that sweet at all. Maybe we're supposed to put something on it. Now, I know you can also get different fillings, so maybe we should have got custard or like a cream cheese or something like that. I think it's safe to say we'll go back and try it again. It is good, I just expect it like a lot more of a punch when it comes to sweetness. Next up we are eyeing some sushi and luckily they had a little bit left but there were no seats so we're gonna try to do this out here. We're gonna be standing up trying to eat this but if you're wondering what this is, it's some salmon sushi, nigiri, so you can see the fresh uh, fish on the top and then the little bit of rice kind of below that. I am a huge sushi fan and this is gonna be the first time I ever try it in Japan. All right, so here's my plan. I have some wasabi down here already and I have this little, uh, little tiny soy sauce that's the most adorable soy sauce on the planet. It's like a little fish. I have no container for this, so I'm just gonna, I guess I'm just gonna put it maybe over top of it. Don't get mad at me, Japanese people, because I have no other way to do this. This is a big old piece of sushi. Look at that. <laughs> like the salmon is massive. I'm not sure of my approach here. I don't think I'm going to get to the rice on the first bite. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Oh. I asked her, is it fresh? And she's like, oh, yeah. Is it ever fresh? They just caught it today. It's so, so good. Zero fishy taste. That's when you know it's really good sushi. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm. this is exceptional stuff. Exceptional stuff. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. You guys, it's not disappointing at all. Oh my God, how does Japan do this? How do they do it? Best sushi? I think I've ever had. And I've had a lot of sushi. So I very rarely eat fish because I usually don't like anything that's remotely, remotely fishy tasting at all. When I've eaten it on the channel before, I think it's been like ceviche. I might've had fish and chips here and there, but I usually get Trevor to test it out first to make sure there's like zero fishy flavors. I know most people don't understand that, but the people that understand it really <laughs> understand it. Yeah, so I'm going to go for this. It always makes me so nervous, but Trevor had a pretty ringing endorsement. Ooh, oh, falling apart. It's hard. You, can't, you don't have too long to do it. Shoot. It does test the uh, chopstick stills though. All right, take two. Mm. 
Okay, so in general, I would say that's really, really, really good. Zero fishiness whatsoever. The only weird thing for me is definitely the texture of it. A little bit, I don't know if slimy is the right word for yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's something you're not used to. Yeah. So they have to remember that you don't eat stuff like this. No, and when, like I said before, in other times that I've had it, it's been in ceviche, which usually is kind of relatively smaller than this. It's like a big old chunk of fish. So that's my only issue with it. Otherwise, it's super delicious and I could definitely eat it. I just have to get over the texture of it. What's kind of nice about the market is uh, it's busy in spots, but it's easy to kind of get away from the crowds and then just step aside to eat like we just did. It's nice and quiet. So you guys can actually uh, actually hear us. We're here about 4.30 in the afternoon. I wonder if it starts to close down soon. So maybe that's why it's not jam packed. But uh, yeah, I'm glad we came at this time of day. Anna's got her list here of uh, stuff we're looking for. Yeah, maybe did... we're gonna go back and forth, I think, between sweet and savory. We just did savory. Time for some sweet again. <laughs> yeah, what are these things? They're your mochi, which I've never had before. Apparently it's like a rice, made out of rice cake or something. So this, on the sign said it's a strawberry daifuku, if I'm saying that properly. What I did read about it online, as I already said, is that it's made out of mochi. Hopefully that's correct. It also said that it's made out of white bean paste. There was an option for red bean paste, but we just since we just had red beans a couple of things ago, I figured we'd go for the white bean this time. And then there's a strawberry on the inside. Let's talk about the texture before I actually tr try it, because it feels way different. It's a little bit like gel gelatinous, maybe is the right term. And it's really cold. Like it kind of squishy between my fingers. Let's try it. So far today with the desserts, it's just all I can say is really strange like I'm not disliking them by any means but they're not at all what I expected so it's super jelly like on the outside it's like your teeth just go right into it kind of pulls apart so a very very strange texture strawberry in the middle is really good though and there's kind of flour on the outside so I feel like I have flour all over my face <laughs> next up we found a stall here with some Japanese beef some amazing looking Japanese beef and I had to get this this is Wagyu so some of you guys might have heard of that the other um, very famous beef premium beef over here is uh, Kobe so thought I'd get some Wagyu try it out this is likely the most expensive uh, beef on a stick <laughs> that I've ever uh, I've ever about to taste in my life but had to be done I'm in Japan how often does this happen let's go for it oh. Oh man, well, the flavor just keeps coming. Mm, 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 mm. The beef is just so, so soft. That's the thing that shocks me the most, and this wasn't even the uh, the one that is the most soft of all of them. There was another option, but this is this is fantastic, you guys. The flavor's great, yeah, it's nice and flat, easy to eat, and then he put this sauce over the top of it. I didn't even get time to ask what it was. He just threw it on top, and it's just a delight to have this in the country. All the things coming in here, like sushi, this beef. I was, it's just so high on my list of things to try. And here we are in this awesome little market in Osaka, trying it out and it's not even close to disappointing us. This is so good. It's delicious. All right, we finished up at the market because, well, mainly everything was uh, closing, huh? <laughs> yeah, so I'd say, I think it maybe in the morning is when it's like super busy. Again, I don't know if Saturday factors into it or not, or if it's busier during the weekdays or if it's just a morning thing, but try to go like mid-afternoon because around four or five things do start to close. Also notice some places on my list were closed as well. Maybe again, a Saturday thing, I'm not sure. We found a restaurant to try something we're on the hunt for. It's called Okonomiyaki. I think I'm saying that right. I think it's Okonomiyaki, Okonomiyaki. <laughs> <laughs> she can confirm, Okonomiyaki, I think. We'll figure out the pronunciation as we go, but we got a front row of seat here. Take a look at this, they're uh, cooking, uh, I think what might be hours back there. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, we actually ordered a couple of things. So one is the Okonomiyaki, which is a type of pancake, I think. Normally it comes with like pork and seafood, but here they have a whole bunch of different options. So we went for rice cake, and cheese yeah. should be interesting. Also, this is what we really like about Japan. You get to kind of sit at these uh, kind of bar areas, but they cook like right in front of you. It's really shallow like counter, so it's a lot of fun and just something we're not used to. So our first dish has arrived and definitely the most interesting way of being served ever. There's this hot tray that goes all the way in front of the bar in front of us, and they basically put it right on top. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take a look at this, you guys. 
Oh, cool. It looks like it's moving as well, but that's like the fish plate. So you got more fish in, in your life here. Yeah. But when the, I didn't realize it came with that. I probably would have asked for it without, but it's fun to look at at least. So we got two dishes, and the first one to come out is the yakisoba, not the okonomiyaki. Now I forget how to say it. Okonomiyaki. Okonomiyaki. We went for a yakisoba, which is a fried noodle. I think it just basically translates to fried noodles. So there are noodles in there. There is some cabbage. I think there's supposed to be pork. There's, we actually asked for uh, green onions on the top. There were, as we said, some bonita flakes, which I'm not so excited about. They're like fish flakes or like fish skin, I think. Let's give it a go. So either that first bite didn't include any fish or it just blends in really nicely. I'm hoping it's the latter. This is a really nice dish. Kind of like a soy saucy kind of flavor on it. A little bit sweet, a little bit salty, but really nice dimensions in there. Crunchiness from the onions and the cabbage is really nice. And I think there, as I said, there is some pork in there somewhere, but it adds a really nice saltiness. All right, the second one, the okonomiyaki. Now I forget how to say it. Okonomiyaki. 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 I had it down and now I like lost it as we waited for it. It has arrived it's on this hot plate in front of us. Wow, look at that. Look how pretty it looks. There's like a design on top of there. So I think the idea is you kind of cut it and then we'll just kind of serve it out. So basically this thing is a pancake. Now normally people get it, a lot of Japanese people would get it with pork or seafood. We did not do that, we got cheese and there's rice cake in here. There's also like a mystery sauce on top. He asked me right at the end, do we want to put uh, mayonnaise on the top of it? He said, why not? So here we go. This is delicious. And right away I'm trying to figure out what this kind of mystery sauces on uh, on the top of this thing. It's kind of like a soy sauce, but it's a bit tangy, almost like a bit vinegary, but you really taste the cheese. Obviously the pancake comes through as well, but such an interesting uh, mixture. It's like, um, like a thick omelet. Like in our part of the world, omelets are very popular. So it's like a really thick, savory uh, omelet with mayo on the top as well. Interesting mixture of all the flavors, but I'm definitely really digging this and how fun to be sitting right here at this bar watching them cook. There's so much action, you can probably tell it's pretty loud in here as well, but yeah, I'm gonna finish this up because it's way too good. Well, we didn't really get the chance to show you Osaka at night, but wow, it definitely uh, lights up, might we say? And uh, <laughs> way more people. This isn't even one of the major roads, but yeah. there's quite a few folks around. Yeah, this area, Dotenbori, is that? Dotenbori, yeah. Yeah, that's where we are right now. It's kind of the main area. We were in, here in the last video, but during the day, here at nighttime, it's just like so many people, so many lights, it's really fun. Japan is so much fun in the day, but at night is when this city comes alive. You can see what's happening behind me now. Again, we're just on one of the uh, smaller streets. Look ahead, there's cars, there's people absolutely everywhere. It's so much fun just walking around here. The visuals are just like over the top. There's so much to see, so much artwork, and all the colors. <laughs> Look at all the colors of this place, like it's crazy, huh? Yeah, it's like all the signs that you don't really notice that much during the day, just all light up during the night. I know. This is, I love this all, like it's red, yellow, orange, white, this, look at all the people. <laughs> people everywhere. Well, this was such a fun day eating all of the Japanese food we possibly can, huh? Yeah, I know. There's so many dishes here that we were so excited about. We only got to try, obviously, a few of them because we're two people and we can only eat so many things in one day. Yeah. There's still like ramen and I, just I think we so did pretty many, well. I think we did well. If too. you guys didn't know, we filmed this all in one day and we ate all that food over the course of about four hours? Yeah, maybe even less than that. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> traveling so hard on the waistline. Yeah. <laughs> but hey. Thankfully, we don't eat like this every day. We don't. A lot of you guys ask us. We don't do that every day. Mm -hmm. But and so, so fun. The food here is obviously outstanding. Yeah. And sometimes- Do you have a favorite? A, a favorite food today? Yeah. Oh, maybe, like the maybe the sushi. I just had high, such high expectations coming in that yeah, like the sushi, I, I, did, I, I was wondering how good it could possibly be. How could it be any better than I imagined? And it was. Yeah, my favorite was probably actually the pancake at the very end. Mm. The more we got into it, the better it got. It was really, really delicious. Yeah, what a day. Oh, so we're so stoked to be in Osaka, to be in Japan, and just going around trying all this food. But if you guys got this far in the video, we really appreciate you watching. It's Trevor and Anna, Delightful Travelers. Hit like, hit subscribe. You know the drill. Leave us a comment. We also noticed there was quite a few comments in the last video about 
the metro and the transit system and the trains here. So you'll be happy to know that uh, we, we got some cards, like Coca cards. The Coca cards, and it's definitely be way better. So the for, just for people that didn't watch or didn't watch the last video, we tried using like a ticket, like we bought a ticket out of a machine and it was so confusing. Well, it was extra confusing when we tried to transfer with the tickets, yeah, we needed an extra Basically, ticket. Basically it didn't work, so we had to go buy another ticket even though we mm -hmm. thought we had the right ticket, so, and we couldn't find the right line. It was just like a big catastrophe, basically. But, we bought the Evoke cards and I'm pretty sure it's so much easier. We've used it a couple times now. You just tap on, tap off, and then it like yeah. takes the, the amount we, of money we off. Had, we had to give you guys an update because you all, you all asked. It's a food video today, but we're good now with the transit system. It just took yeah. a... I think we have it more or less down. <laughs> yeah. Sort of. So, new video coming up soon. Thanks again for watching. And we can't wait to share more of Japan, huh? Alright guys, that's it. From Osaka, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.